Well, I know that all of you here understand that freedom isn't free. There's a price that was paid for that we might be here today and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this Memorial Day is all about. And the truth is that Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price so that we could be here part of his wonderful family. Because God loves you and God is good. And all the time, let's stand and worship him. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. things that you do for us all week long. 
And we just thank you for this church that we can come and worship you, Lord. We'd like to lift up our service, men and women, Lord, over the world and just ask that each one of those be blessed. We lift up those who have in the service who have passed on before us, Lord. And we just thank you for all the things that you did for them and that they did for our nation. Again, Lord, we praise your name and all you do. In Jesus' name. Good morning. This is a wonderful day for my family and also for the Lord as one of his own has come to be baptized. My son two weeks ago accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior and he wants to follow in believer's baptism. Carson, do you accept Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. I don't know who was more brave there, the father or the son. <laughs> Is there a couple, a couple of pictures uh, we're going to show, Doug? Yeah, here's what uh, Steve Al Courier. Uh, Bill Brim and Keith Menefee worked on week before last, or, or, or replaced. Where's the, where, this is the before shot. Where's the after shot, Doug? Yeah, there you go. A little bit better. Of course, we believe that they actually paid locals to do it and then just took the pictures, and I think they just sipped coffee all week. Now nah, they came back pretty tired. So thanks, guys. Thank, thanks for the work that you did. Uh, graduate recognition is next week, and uh, hadn't heard from some of you, so... Moms and dads, I know that you want to you uh, honor your, your kids, so let us know about their graduation and uh, uh, contact Ryan about that pretty quick. Vacation Bible Schools in just a few weeks. You can register today uh, immediately following the service. Also, there is a VBS workers meeting immediately following the worship service in the fellowship hall today. Baby dedications in a couple of weeks. Uh, you need to contact the office to have your, your baby dedicated. If you're a guest this morning, thanks for being here. Would you find the guest registration form inside the worship guide, and would you fill that out completely and put it in the offering plate a little later in the service? We're glad that you're here. Thank you for choosing us to worship with. Do us a favor right now. Just stay seated. Village, let's stand and welcome our guest. <laughs>
Let's continue worshiping our Lord and Savior. My Lord Jesus, I do come to you this morning, as you tell us do, and then you will pass the word on to our Father. And your Lord, just ask you to teach us to, not to steal from you, like you say in Malachi uh, 3, but to give you what is rightfully yours. And the Lord, we all know that there's no way we can outgive you. And we ask that you'll just be with us and guide us in, in those uh, areas and just be with us in every way. This is our precious name. Amen. In your bulletin is an article that we have that we wrote about what he's accomplished. I wanted him to play today, but he has been, and I'm probably get all these words wrong. The Falcone Competition Euphonium Student Division from all over the world, they picked six people to compete and three alternates. He is a part of that group. Competing this summer, he was accepted by two of the top music camps in America. He picked one of them to be attending that, training under the top euphonium. Did I get that right? Oh, the bass. The bass? The bass top base at the music camp. So he's going to be training on one of the best ones ever. Give this kid a hand. He's done some amazing things. Congratulations. Where did he get the talent? I'm not certain. <laughs> I want to pray for him. Every so often, God blesses kids with unique talents that could bring glory to him. And I'm going to pray God continue to help you grow in that talent. Father, I thank you for William and how you have blessed his family and all the music that you have put within their hearts and souls. And I pray, Father, that you help him, especially this summer as he competes and also as he studies. May this be a very profitable time this summer. 
And I pray, Father, that he'll use this talent to bring you honor and glory and uplift the name of Christ. Bless his family in all these days as he is be away. And I pray, Father, that you'll be glorified through all of this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And congratulations. We are really blessed here at Village Parkway to have this family with us. And you know, it's one thing to have talent and ability, and it's something else to have it totally surrendered to the Lord so that he can do what he wants to do with it. He puts that talent within us, and then he allows parents and others to develop that talent if we are willing to let him do it and bring glory and honor to him. We've been pleased to have William in the orchestra and the Carnes family for quite some time. And I'm so grateful for what God is doing in his life. The bottom line is, all of us need to say, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Would you stand as we sing together? Oh, yeah. 
before we pray, this being Memorial Day, as I was getting ready for the week, I went back pulling something I had in my notes. It'd be three years this summer that Travis Babine, a young boy who grew up in our school, about, be about 10, 11 years ago, was a student at Village Parkway Christian School. Who even back then in older elementary school and young middle school had a goal in life. He was going to be an officer serving the United States Marines. And as he got out of high school in San Antonio, he joined the Marines boot camp and was deployed to Afghanistan where he served. Served faithfully. July word had come to us that Travis in a Humvee had been had run over an IED, IUD, and it blew up the Humvee. But the four men in it were miraculously delivered. Not a scratch. I've read the emails between he and his mom afterwards as he gave God glory and all that happened. And it was four weeks to the day, the exact same spot, the Humvee was hit again. Travis never got to fulfill the dream he wanted, which was to serve, go to college, and then go back in the Marines and be an officer. He wanted to know what it was like to be at the lower end of the level so that he could be a great officer one day as he served our country. There have been many Travis Babines who never fulfilled their dreams, but they gave their life so that you and I might have freedom. So on this Memorial Day, join with me as I lead us in a corporate prayer and give God the glory and the thanks for those who have made possible us to be able to live here in the United States of America. Join with me as we pray. Father, I do thank you for this day and the time I'm weekend in which we stop to reflect upon all those men and women who've given their lives and service to our country in order that we might have this amazing country which we get to live in with all the freedoms to be able to worship you and to serve you. And I thank you for men and women like Travis who had many dreams of life of what they were going to do but who gave those dreams up in combat and in other circumstances and situations. But the ultimate price pays so that we could live quietly here at home. And I thank you for them. And we always want to remember in a very special way all those who have given their lives. But it's also a Memorial Day at a time to remember also the one who gave his life for us. And that being Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you loved us enough that you sent your only begotten Son who faced all the evils the world had to give. Walked boldly all the way to the cross. Perfectly fulfilled every law. And gave up his life. And in his death we have found life. And in his resurrection hope. So Father you be glorified this day as we continue our worship. As our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated.
All right, take your Bibles, turn to John chapter 3, verses 31 through 36. John chapter 3, verses 31 through 36. The other day when we were working on the buildings you saw, uh, that green one, somebody said it looked like a chicken coop. Chicken coops were cleaner than that was. But anyway, we're, they're, they're going to knock it down and the rest of the building will be put up hopefully in the next three or four weeks. But working in the equator sun out there gets very intense. And where we were at, there was no trees on that little platform they cut out for the school to be built on. And so one afternoon, I, I went inside the little schoolroom just to get a break and, uh, from the sun for just a second. Uh, I've been spraying enough of that uh, uh, sunscreen. Oh, let me give you another thing you can use sunscreen for we learned. Last Sunday about this time, we were trying to get back to the airport, and our car broke down in the mountains and would not start again. And we had flights out, and we wanted to come home. We were tired, and there was nobody going to help us. And we found a house and knocked on the door and asked for a Coca-Cola because you pour Coke on the battery. Maybe it'll get all the corrosion because corrosion was real bad on the battery. They didn't have a Coca-Cola. So if you use your sunscreen spray, it's great at getting rid of the corrosiveness. It just zipped it away, and we got the car started. So another thing you can use for your sun spray. I don't think I'm ever putting any more on my skin again after that one. <laughs> but I got inside the building that day, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just looking at it. And I'm sitting in a chair, and there's a, um, a pinup board with kids who have been doing their color drawings, little kids, like they do in school. And there was a word on it called creacion on the top. And mi espanol progresando en pequeño paso. It's progressing in small steps. I'll translate for those of you who can't speak Spanish. If I said that, I hope that's what I said. But I thought, that's going to be creation. So what I did was, I, Dan came in. I said, Dan, I'm pushing the limit here, but it's creation. creation. He said, yeah. I said, look at the pictures. These are Quebecer Indian kids' view of creation. And Ron, they had the small stones. Cebu was on there. They had ugly looking spirits and fire and all kinds of strange things that goes with the culture of that. What we're trying to do down in Costa Rica is bring light into darkness. And those buildings you saw will have a Bible school hopefully in them in about four weeks whenever we send the next team down. What I want to do today is, is just remind us again on Memorial Day of what life is about. Stand with me as we read, because we have a great story to tell. John the Baptist is finishing up in chapter 3 with these words. He who comes from above is above all. He who is on the earth is from the earth and speaks of the earth, but he who comes from heaven is above all. What he has seen and heard, of that he testifies. Now no one received his testimony. He who has received his testimony has set his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Father, in the moments that we have this day, remind us again of what it is to have life that comes by simple faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch over and guide us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Looking at the story of creation on the walls at the Quebecer School just reminded me again of a situation a couple years ago when some of us were uh, working on the Quebecer Hotel in another area of the, of the jungles that we'd gone to. Working there, and I, I remember the guy's name is Alejandro, but I don't remember Alejandro, the, he was a Quebecer Indian. He gave his testimony to us. And I've never forgotten that testimony because it's one of the most amazing testimonies I've ever heard. He grew up worshiping that little rock. That was his hope and significance. And never so often within your life, you make a pilgrimage into the jungle to where the, really it's a witch doctor is, and you would go and you give some offering and you do some work for him on his farm and do all kinds of stuff. And in doing that, Cebu will bless you. Well, before he went in, Timoteo Jones, one of the translators who's translating the Bible from English into Quebecer, had just, had just finished Genesis or some part of it, and he said to this Alejandro, can I read to you Genesis 1 in your language? And as best I know, that man that day, who's about my age, heard the Word of God for the first time ever. Impact? None. Change of life? None. 
He just heard it. Sometime down the way, he goes into the jungle and begins the, prog- the processional to the, where the witch doctor was. And when he gets there and they begin their kind of worship they would do there, and the little rock was his God, and he kept remembering Timoteo Jones' God in Genesis 1, and he told us he immediately got up and left and went out of the jungle back home. And somewhere along the way, he ran into Timoteo or to Philip one and wanted to know about their God. And he came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And he found life and light. Because the God whom we serve is the great creator of the universe. And when he realized how the bigness of God from Genesis 1, it overwhelmed him. Well, John the Baptist is going to give us some insights. This is a part of the scripture that you've already read, John 3, 16. We've done some of the other things. And you'd get to this last end. And you'd move on quickly to to the story of the Samaritan woman because that's a really good story to tell. But I wanted to stop and not go too fast through this. Three weeks ago was the last time I was in the pulpit before we went to Costa Rica. I preached, he must increase, we must decrease. John now will explain to you in detail why he must. Look at some of the facts I'm going to read to you. I'm going to give you four or five facts. First one's found in verse 31. Jesus Christ comes from above. He who comes from above is above all. He who is from the earth is from the earth and he speaks to the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. He is talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Man cannot reach God. It's been the impossibility, never been done. Man cannot find God, nor does he have a desire to find God. Romans 3.11 tells us that. The reason we're even here today is because God came down from the heavens. It is a powerful statement of the importance of every single one of us in this room. God, who created the world, sent His Son for you and for me. This morning I was reading in my, the Daily, which is on my iPad, the newspaper that I read. And there's a tragic story that's unfolded in California that hopefully is turning good. And I, I wrote the kid's name down and left it on my desk. He played football in high school and was the greatest football player California's ever seen. This kid, they said, in high school had a ticket to the NFL. USC recruited him over everybody else. He could not miss. This kid dominated a high school football field to a level that no one had ever done before. But with the greatness of his talent, coming from a good family and a a good mom who watched over him, yet had quite a bit of insignificance within his own life. Still didn't feel like he could reach up and be what he ought to be. Whenever you do not see the value of who you are, you try to find value in everyone else and you become easily prey to those who will take advantage of you for whatever reason. And his life took a horrible turn in high school. His senior year as he graduated, a young lady accused him of rape. And his life was destroyed. His attorney told him to plead a bargain because there's no way they would believe this young man. And so he pleaded and got six years of prison. Lost his college career, lost everything. To find some significance in life, he put himself into a trap and it ruined him. It ruined him. I mean, it ruined him. He got out of prison this week. It turns out it was a lie. It was so much a lie, it's unbelievable. The girl and her mom made $1.5 million off the school, have already spent every penny of it, are broke, are running from creditor upon creditor, and she Facebooked him in prison and said, I lied, and they were eventually able to prove that, and he got out. You know, most of the time in the world, we all get in trouble because we just don't realize how significant we are. Do you realize this truth that God came down shows the significance of every single person in this room? And that I don't need the significance of the world out there to get caught up in all of that. All I have to know is that in the Father's eyes, He created me and He wants to give me life and He sent His Son for me. This is one of the most powerful truths you'll ever find in Scripture that Jesus Christ came down to this earth. But the second thing that I noticed that John said, not only come down, but in verse 31, this one who comes down. And in verse 34, it said, the Father sent Him. In verse 31, it says, He is above all. Hebrews 4 says he passed through the heavens. Ephesians said he ascended all the heavens. And then in Hebrews 7, he, exalted, he is exalted above the heavens. This one who came down is King of kings, Lord of lords, and he is greater than all. That's who we're here to worship this day. 
It is not a rock as the Quebecer Indian kids we saw last week worship. It's a little small stone wrapped up, kept by a man in the jungle. We serve the creative universe and the Lord Jesus Christ is the name above all names. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. But that's whom we worship. And John is writing at very clearly now he says I must decrease because the one who has to increase is the one who came from heaven and he is the only one who can tell us what goes on up there and he is the one that's above all but then he adds on to that even more when he says in verse 32 that only Christ can explain life verse 32 he testifies of what he's seen and heard now the world doesn't receive it but Christ tells us what goes on in heaven he tells us the truths we need to know A lot of times people say, well, you know, preacher, I'd read my Bible more, but you can't have it at work. You, you can't, you know, I don't want to, I'd hate to have it out where people take notice of it. Well, guys, we live in a new day. I just hit my thing like that and I just loaded my Bible. There it is. Did you know in the jungles, they have Wi-Fi in the jungles now? I am not joking. There's Wi-Fi. You ever seeing the pictures posted on Facebook? I did that live from the jungles. Somebody had to watch the other guys work and rest, so I did that while the guys worked. I took their pictures. Did you know everybody out there has phones and everything else? We live in a whole new world that we lived in 10 years ago. Most of you carry, can carry the Word of God with you. You can know it so well it's unbelievable. Do you realize that what we have in here is Jesus telling us what we need to know from the Father in heaven? Do you realize that you have in your hands the testimony of all that you need to know? You say, well, there's so much more that even that doesn't say. Well, you know what? My family is all together in southeast Texas. My brother's son got married yesterday. I wanted to be there, but I figured if I missed another Sunday, I wouldn't have a job, so I, I wasn't able to go. But it was, it was a great time. I, I, I called my brother late last night. They had a great time together celebrating Jeremiah's wedding. We never thought anybody would ever have him, and somebody finally took him, and it just was exciting. But you know, I was thinking last night as I wanted to be there and I couldn't. You know, as a kid growing up, my mom and dad didn't tell me everything was going on. If we were ever short of money, I never knew it. They never, it never was said, you know, we got about $5 in the checking account one week to pay day and I don't know how we're going to survive. If that happened, they never told me. If they were, ever got to the point they couldn't pay their electric bill, I didn't know it. If we were ever short of food, I didn't know it. When mom was sick and I was a child of five, and I never knew at the time until many years later that she was very deathly sick and it was close to, we could have lost her. I never knew that. Mom and dad didn't tell me everything going on. You know what? They, they didn't have to. The Father in heaven doesn't tell us everything that is going on. What the Father in heaven does is tells us what is important and what you need to know to get by. Just like my mom and dad would tell me what I needed to know to function as a child within that family. And you have here... Christ, the one who has revealed everything the Father wanted us to know. Man, lay significance of that. And every day you get a chance to reflect and think upon the amazing words that Christ has given to us that we can grasp and understand all that is going on. Do you know how much freedom that will give you to live? Dan Friedley would drive us everywhere we went. Many of you know Dan. Uh, he played in our orchestra, the oboe, was in the Air Force Band of the West before he retired. Every time Dan would get to the car, he'd say, uh, Preacher, you want to drive? Nope. Not in those jungle roads. I mean, you're driving along, and I'd be looking out the window, and it's three to 400 feet. I used to say thousands of feet, but they told me it was only three to 400 feet. But it's sheer drops. And I don't know about some of you who've been, but I've never had a quiet, comfortable trip through those mountains without my stomach turning and my heart beating an extra beat. And I'm nervous. I don't like heights. I never liked heights. And so I am nervous. And so Dan one day said, Preacher, won't you drive everybody out there? I said, I'm not doing it, Dan. I'm not going to be responsible for the death of these other men. I mean, I knew his family, Alan, your family would be upset if I drove off. So I didn't do that. Or Keith, your wife, I mean, Sherry, you would have been upset. But one day we had to go get something. Dan said, Steve, you want to drive? I said, let's do it. I can kill Dan. That's not that big a deal. (laughs) And so we drove. I want you to know something. I did it. It went well. But it had a profound impact upon me that I really found strange. I never was nervous for the rest of the week after driving that car. I really wasn't. My fear is com- was completely gone. I still looked out the window thing. In fact, 
There is a spot that when you come back that I, to this, I have never liked it. It's on one of the roads. How do we get out of the jungle? And it's up high, and it's a single lane, and it's a sheer drop, and it's a massive washout area, and I have never liked it. This time we drove by, I was just sitting there looking a long way down there, but I wasn't nervous. What changed? The experience of driving that Land Rover on that road, seeing the stability of the road, the stability of the car, stability of everything that was going on, the security that I had, suddenly realized I'm more secure than I ever realized, even with Dan driving or anyone else. Now, switch it over to our Lord. When you begin to have him reveal to you all you need to know, it should produce such a security in you that it takes away the fear of life. That's who's watching over you today. The one who came down from heaven, who's greater than all, reveals to us every single thing that we need to know. But you know, if that's not even enough to help you, let's keep going on. Because in verse 35, it says that the father loves the son. It says it very strongly. The father loves the son and has given him all things into his hand. The father who created all has given his son everything he needs. Now, let me ask a question. How do we know the father loves the son? Because he told us. At the baptism of Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. At the Mount of Transfiguration, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. The one who is the one that comes from heaven, who has all authority and power. The one who's given us everything we need to know. You need to know something. How much the Father loves him. And that love flows through to you and to me. Which leads me to one last thought. The Father has given to His Son everything. Everything. Do you realize that you're even, according to John 17, also Luke 10, you were a gift from the Father to the Son? And you belong to Him? The fact of the matter is, when you get through John, you get to John 17, and Jesus does a high priestly prayer to the Father, do you realize that all He is doing in the high priestly prayer is saying what John the Baptist said about Him was true and lifting it to a level like you never have imagined? Guys, on this Memorial Day, we're here to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who came down this earth, the one who's a name above all names, the one who has given us life and revealed to us every single thing, that the Father loves him, and we are a gift to him, is the one that is watching over you and I today. Now, what do you do with it? That's the critical thing. And then this morning, I know that it be a Memorial Day weekend, that most everyone here has already probably made this decision, but I want us to rethink it through one, once again. The question this morning will be now, what will you see when your life comes to an end? John 3.36 is a very famous verse in the scripture. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Now, if you've got King James, it says he who believes in the Son has life. He who does not believe does not have life. But the words in the Greek are believe in Christ or disobey Christ. The word for believe is pistuo, which is in the Greek. And then the word for disobeying is apatheo, which means an unwillingness. It's a refusal to comply to the request that has been given to you. What it is saying there, if you do not obey Jesus, that is not referencing the breaking of the law. We've all done that. There is not one of us in this room that comes close to saying, follow my example in life. We all fall short of the glory of God. That's not what this is referencing to. Because we've all fallen short of the grace of God and all fallen short because of the sinfulness within our heart, we are all, before you met Christ, you were already under the wrath of God. The verse says here, to those who do not obey, they remain in the wrath of God. Everyone's there. What is this obedience talking about? This obedience is that the Father, through the Son, has reached out a hand to you and says, if you'll just grab my hand... I'm going to give you life. And those who look at Jesus Christ and say, I will not have nothing to do with you, will not see life. But those who reach out and grab the hand of Christ and say, I take you as my Lord and Savior, what do they get? It's what you and I already know about. They get life eternal. Now I want to spend a moment here. What is eternal life? My simple, and it's just simple faith in Christ. I don't, I don't do anything. I don't have to accomplish anything. I just believe in Him. But what is life? Is eternal life going up into the heavens, 
getting up there and then going to the checkout line and get your harp and then go sit on a cloud and play a harp. I want you to know if that's all there is to it, I'm going to be disappointed. I could see maybe golf or baseball, but a harp, no. <laughs> no. What is eternal life? I mean, I'm serious. John 17, 3 tells us what eternal life is. This is eternal life that you know the Father and you know the Son. When you come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what happens? You begin to grasp and understand who God is. It's a growing process, but you begin to know Him. And the more you know Him, the stronger you become in life to be able to live. But you, that's life. That's, and it goes on from here on out. We just get to know Him better and better. And one day when we go to be with Him, we'll walk into His presence and we will see clearly at that point. But it's knowing Him. Those little kids in the jungle, you know, we'd be playing soccer together and they just get a kick out of us playing soccer because we, we're not soccer players. And they're calling us names, laughing at us. And the names aren't nice. They don't know I know a little bit of Spanish and so I know the, that kind of stuff. But they're just kids and they're, they're having a blast with life with us. But you want to know something? They have no knowledge of who God is. And it's so frustrating as a preacher because I can't speak Quebecer. I'd like to be able to talk to them a little bit more. But I'm trusting our missionaries down there to be able to do that. And our team will go down and work with them and tell them stories. But we'll present to them the Lord Jesus Christ because God is not a rock. God is the creator of the universe. And eternal life is knowing the one who created all things. You know, you sit there in the morning. It's 5.30 in the morning. I love this. I don't do this here because at 5.30 it's still dark. But at 5.30 in the morning in the jungles, it's light. And you walk out on the back porch where the washing machine is at the center, and it's a little porch. And you sit down with a cup of Costa Rican coffee made out of a dirty sock, and you've never had coffee till you've done that. And you sit there, and you just look around at God's creation, and you know what comes to mind? This is a day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice in it. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and here's part of his thousand hills. He spoke this into creation. He spoke it into existence by his word. All those truths that God has allowed me the privilege of getting to understand, I sit there and get to reflect upon those as I sit there. And you know what that does when you have those kind of starts to your morning? It puts a quietness within your heart. That's what eternal life is, is that we know the true and the living God. And we know what he thinks and we know what he expects and we know what life is about. We know Christ. That's life. But the second thing that comes with life is found, I got this from Acts 13 or 3, 19. It's when Peter is preaching and he says, I want you to repent so your sins will be wiped away and in order that times of refreshing may come. Now I've taught that two or three times. I never translate it. So I'm talking about refreshing. It's like a rain coming or something like that. It just makes life new. And that kind of is there, but it has a better meaning than that. That word refreshing means to breathe freely. When you and I have our sins forgiven and we come to faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been set free. And you can breathe. You can live. It's this way. When I'm riding in the car and Dan's driving us those first two days, and we, we, there's a couple spots. You make this curve. In fact, the one I'm thinking it curves this way. And it's about 200 feet. It's pure mud. It's single lane. And it's five-inch rain the night before. And we're going to do that. And I'm going... What if the tires slip? What if they start sliding? Dan's a good driver, but can he handle this? And you know how your mind is. You start playing all that out and going, that's, that's going to hurt. You know what I realize is I'm not even breathing. I am so nervous, I'm not breathing. Fear does that to us. What he's saying is there's, we no longer live in fear when we come to know Christ. Our sins have been wiped out. We're free. We can breathe. We can live. That's what eternal life is. It's not going to heaven. It's living now freely in Christ Jesus. We now have a knowledge of who he is and we have the ability to be able to live. But the third thing that comes with eternal life comes from 2 Peter 3.13. But according to his promises, we look forward to a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. We have a hope. Life gives hope. We have a living hope. And that hope is one day we walk on this earth with Him, in His presence, in all the glory that comes with that. 
Can you imagine as beautiful as this world is, and you have, many of you have traveled all over this world, as beautiful it is what the new heaven and new earth will look like? No longer a curse. All the beauty of God's creation. I saw my first toucan fly by. It was gorgeous. I still want to see a monkey in them. They have, by the school, they have what's called Monkey Mountain. There's no monkeys. The Indians ate them all. Literally, they're gone. No monkeys, none. But in the new heaven, new earth, the lion lays down with the lamb. A child could play next to a cobra or a viper. You have to watch in the jungles, they have vipers, and you don't want to get bit by one. But there'll come a day you could reach down and let the viper just crawl all over your hand. The new heaven, new earth. What would it be like to sit down to a lion and just pet him? That's new heaven and new earth. You know what else this is? Have you ever there's some thoughts? Just run some thoughts in your heads right now. Can you imagine in the new heaven, new earth, never a family stressful situation ever? Never one stressful family situation ever again. None. That's new heaven, new earth. Some of you are getting older. Can you imagine rolling out of bed? And I, I was corrected the other day when I was doing this somewhere. There's no night in heaven. But I'm going to still roll us out of bed a minute. And it doesn't hurt. No pains. No suffering. New heaven and new earth, you realize you never have to live in fear that the loved one who has cancer is going to die because there is no cancer. Never again we do as I did or some of you have done. I watched my mom die as we held her and couldn't stop it. I never will go through that ever again. Never will I get a phone call that your sister has died suddenly. Not in new heaven, new earth. Every dream of what you think life is about is far beyond that in the new heaven, new earth. That's something we look forward to. Not now, but that's in the future. That's our hope. We look forward, Peter said, to a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells all this made possible by just simple faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior so my question this morning simply is this have you trusted in him who gives life I know this is Memorial Day crowd and we're down but I'm still going to ask you you know, Paul used to have this discussion exactly like this with Felix. And Felix, after hearing the discussion one day, looked at Paul and said, Paul, listen, won't you just kind of disappear for a little bit? I'll call you back later. We'll have this discussion later. Made him nervous. Let's not deal with it right now. We'll think about this another time. You know, we don't know if that ever discussion ever took place. In fact, it probably did a few times, but he never did anything with it because he always wanted money. Or how about Agrippa? Paul, in a short time, you may persuade me. Paul said, I wish to God that whether in a short time or a long time, not only you, but everyone who hears me this day would come to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. Remind yourself this. Broad is the way to destruction and many find the way. Narrow is the path to life and few are those who find it. And may you never be among those in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount that stand before their Father one day and He says, I'm sorry, I do not know you. Depart from me. And they said, did we not do miracles in your name? Do we not do this in your name? Do we not do this in your name? He said, I'm sorry, I don't know you. You did not obey me. The obeying this day is simply that Jesus has reached out his hand to every single one in this room and says, if you'll just trust me, I give you life eternal. Now, I know most in this room have already done that. Guys, I close with one last thought. If he can take care of getting you to the new heaven and new earth, can he not do get you safely there through this life? Do you know how much quieter we'd be and how much we would enjoy life more if we could trust his providential workings in our life in preparation the day he calls us home? Do you know how much quieter our lives would be if we bought into Romans 8, 28, really? You know, God calls us all things together. Those that love him, 
works it for good to those that love and called according to his purpose. But as someone reminded me a while back when I was quoting that, I didn't quote the whole thing. We know. We know that he does that. Boy, if you know that, you know how much quieter that gives the freedom now to live. It does not make life smoother. It does not take away the difficulties because we're on a narrow path. And narrow paths are rough and treacherous and difficult to walk. But you can walk it because he's walking with you and will take care of you. So some of you don't need to make a decision for life. You already know it. But you need to live that life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And that is, whatever life may bring to you, you walk through it and give him glory. I have pulled something off for this summer. You already want to mark your calendars. It'll be the last two Sundays of July and the first Sunday of August at nighttime. I got Dr. Montavon going to come and talk to us. How do we turn the culture upside down in this election year for Christ? A man who turned a country totally upside down in Romania and overthrew communism. He's going to come back and spend the nighttime sitting with anybody who wants to talk with him about how to do that. But one of the reasons I want him to come is that man lived life in the most difficult situation and glorified the Father. And I want to follow a man who can show me Christ that way. I'm here to call you. Christ gave you life. You believe in that. And you live it fully every day. And you give him glory. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day and for the privilege and the honor that you have given us to be able to, to just remember again a little bit of the great truths of who Christ is this day. For you sent your son from heaven to come on this earth to walk in our midst. And he kept the law perfectly and he walked it all the way to the cross and became the perfect sacrifice so that you could take care of the sinfulness of our heart. And he paid the price so we might have life. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has given us everything we need to know about life. And we've seen your love for him and how you have provided and given him all things and all authority are his now. And in that he has given us life. Father, my prayer today is that our faith will become stronger. And in that strength we'll become to know you in a greater way. That we'll walk in a stronger way. And our hope will grow even greater in the days to come. And that in the midst of all of this, Father, you'll be glorified in a way like we cannot even imagine. Father, keep our eyes fixed on Christ is our prayer this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to a time of inquiry. Doug and I are going to be available. We had one come down this morning in the early service, but if you've never given your heart and your life to Christ, I want to give you that privilege on Memorial Day that nobody leaves here unless they know Christ as their Lord and Savior. We're looking for church home this time we receive new members. But we're going to stand. Rob's going to lead us as we sing. And you come if God directs this morning. You come.
weekend, you live life and you enjoy all the moments you have. Jan got a call this morning from her dad. They call every morning each other, 6, 6.30 or whatever it is. They're up in the morning and talk. They've done that now for quite a while. And so in talking this morning, her dad's on the phone. All of a sudden he goes, yes, 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 yes. Well, he's getting old, but he hadn't lost it yet. But it seemed like he might be losing a little bit. Jan said, what are you doing? What are you talking to? Rai Rai, the three-year-old's in the kitchen. Stephanie's kids are all down there. We're joining them later this evening. The three-year-old is asking him so many questions, he doesn't know how to answer them. The three-year-old's winning. <laughs> the three-year-old's winning. I already got control of the kitchen this morning. But you know what? That's living life. You enjoy Memorial Day. People have given us the freedom to enjoy this day. And our Lord and Savior gave us real freedom. You enjoy your moments with your family and friends. You have a great weekend. Office, no activities tonight. Offices are closed tomorrow. Back to regular schedule on Tuesday. Lead us in a benediction and we'll be dismissed. Thank you.